Hello girls, guys, or otherwise, this is Rich, and welcome to another Witchy Wednesday. Today we're going to be talking about uh, pumpkin spice and everything nice about it. Uh, actually, we're just going to talk about pumpkins. Um, I am so basic, I love pumpkin spice, I don't care, who knows. Um, I think it's delicious, and I think it's great. But I wanted to do a video specifically on pumpkin seeds, because... I have pumpkin seeds in here I have not used uh, for years, and I wanted to really delve into um, what pumpkin seeds are good to be used for, but as I started to research this wonderful gourd of pumpkin, it has a lot of different uh, potential uh, things to, to be used for. Anyway, I'm getting tongue-tied here. Let's get on into this. So... First things first, uh, pumpkins are very good for digestion and whatnot. I should be, as you know, I'm dealing with some stomach issues. I should probably be eating more pumpkin everything. Um, plus, I love pumpkin stuff, so that would be probably a good idea for me. Um, but uh, overall, let's look at what a pumpkin is good for. One... Uh, it's good for granting wishes. Uh, it is good for helping out love, uh, helping it grow specifically. It can help grow prosperity. Fertility uh, is definitely something it's good for. Uh, protection, especially uh, with a certain act with the pumpkin. And uh, also divination. Okay, so let's break this down um, for a minute here. First off, let's go with... Uh, granting wishes. Uh, one thing that you can do is you can take pumpkin seeds and ideally these would be from pumpkins that you have uh, you have carved and ever so carefully right on there. Now these are small pumpkin seeds. These are like incredibly small for the ones compared to the ones that I've seen. But you can uh, write ever so uh, you know, slightly on there, a wish, and then you can bury it, you can throw it in a, uh, in a river and whatnot, as, you know, as you do, and that releases the, the wish and carries it on forward. Uh, whenever the next year comes and whatnot, if you are burying it and, it, uh, you know, vines out and everything, then that's even better. It's adding to it. So it's all good stuff. Dobby, what are you doing over there? Excuse me, I had to deal with a with a puppy that was going into the, uh, the altar area. And yeah, I'm not letting either one of them in there right now. Because they don't know how to respect a sacred space. So, yeah. Cats do it. Dogs apparently don't. Anyway. Um, so, yes, you can use the seeds for wishes and whatnot. Uh, it's supposed to help with granting wishes. Keep in mind, I haven't tried any of this. I cannot speak from experience on that. Um, for love, helping grow love. Again, you have the same concept of, uh, you know, the vining out and the growing and the abundance and the, the things that you harvest uh, whenever you utilize seeds, maybe using the seeds in a love satchel um, or sachet, I'm sorry, and hanging that above your bed or even putting it under the bed for a little, um, you know, bed action there. Uh, hanging it up, you can use cinnamon, add a couple pumpkin seeds to it, a little bit of dragon's blood, because dragon's blood uh, goes great with everything. Um, hanging that up and, you know, having that as like an aromatherapy thing, as well as its uh, energy being used for helping with love. So, then we come to prosperity. <clears throat> I'm just going down the list here. Prosperity, again, we have the issue of things growing, the, you know, being more abundant. Think of the pumpkin, you know, whenever you have one little seed and then it grows, it has hundreds, sometimes thousands of 
seeds in there you know depending on how big the pumpkin is and how full you know of seeds it is you can have so many freaking seeds so we have this situation where there's all those seeds and everything and that's really how we're envisioning this uh, as a as a growth as a prosperity is that from one little investment comes thousands or at very least hundreds of different um payoffs to that one little investment of time money energy what what have you um then we have fertility again we have the image of things growing the the abundance of you know hello uh, of one becoming many yeah mr dobby go lay down thank you yeah anyway uh, we, we again have with the fertility of one becoming many, and that is a common theme in fertility is, you know, from one becomes many. Uh, think of Father Abraham. Uh, the next one I want to talk about is divination before I go on to the other one. Uh, divination, um, the way that I would incorporate this is that these are often used when the veil is thinner or the thinnest other than uh, Beltane. So in this instance, it is carrying along that thinness or that connection to that thin veil times and having a pumpkin seed available um, with your cards or whatnot helps uh, with that connection to the other side, you know, something of that nature. It, it kind of holds that energy in there and aids in um, <sighs> It aids in the divination process, let's put it that way. The next one that I had was, uh, or the last one that I have here is protection. And this one you see most commonly represented whenever people actually carve the pumpkin. I wanted to save that one for last because of that. Um, this is the most common thing that we've done. It originally was with turnips uh, in the UK, I believe. And they would take turnips and they would somehow, because turnips are not easy to carve, um, they would somehow create a little jack-o'-lantern of sorts. Because, of course, over there, they didn't have pumpkins at the time. And they did not grow out there. So, yeah, the, the, there's a lot to do with pumpkins here. I think it is an amazing little gourd. Um... And let's, uh, let's continue with my notes here. It represents the potential as one pumpkin creates so many seeds. So, yes, there's one thing that we can use the seeds in and anything that is for abundance. Uh, I also found a tip to use the stems throughout the rest of the year uh, for prosperity. Again, we're taking part of that vine that just, if you've ever seen a... Uh, a pumpkin patch and how it just vines out and curls and everything it's really quite cool to see um but the way that it like you know wraps around and everything anything with a vine would be good for prosperity because vines will get in everywhere uh and they grow so rapidly so whenever you're talking about uh prosperity you want something that's going to help grow something fast so if you don't have access to to pumpkins or a pumpkin stem uh, maybe rather than mixing the whole thing together all together maybe find something of bamboo if that's something that's a little bit more uh, accessible to you to use in your spell work you know instead of using a pumpkin stem now whenever we get pumpkins this year i will be taking off the stem uh before we throw them out because I do want to to try this out. I, I want to, you know, try out the stem of prosperity type thing. Because I think that's really cool. And that's something I probably wouldn't have thought of. I would have thought, if anything, getting ivy off the side of a house. Um, and utilizing that in spell work. Which I guess would also work. But this might be a little bit more substantial to be using in your practice with the stem. So anyway, moving on. Uh, the one that I found that I am most excited to try is candle magic. You know, using it inside the pumpkin. Whenever you're carving it, you, you have it as a protection and whatnot. 
but inside you have another spell work going. So, a couple things that you can do here. You can do a, a sigil on the outside, or, a, you know, just have it as a cute little jack-o'-lantern. Um, and then on the inside, you can get a candle, uh, chime candle, votive candle, tea light, doesn't matter. Uh, probably one that, um, that is associated with what you're going after, what you're, uh, you're trying to achieve with the candle magic and, you know, going with that, putting the candle in there, putting some extra little herbs and bits in there. Uh, you know, you can do all that and then, you know, letting that spell burn and you can, you know, be the only one in a crowd that actually knows that there's actually a spell being cast right then and there, which I think is kind of an exhibitionist style, which kudos to you. Gotcha. Anyway, uh, I, that would be a very exciting thing uh, to try. And I'm all for that. I always like a good candle magic type of of spell work. I like working with fire whenever it comes to spells. Now, another thing that you can use whenever uh, using pumpkin, and this is going to be the last one that I have for today, is you can also use it whenever you're cooking. Of course, those kitchen witches out there know what I'm talking about. If you're planning on making an apple, or um, did I say apple pie, pumpkin pie this, this season, uh, of Samhain into, um, into Yule, you know, anytime in between there. If you're going to be making a pumpkin pie, which if you're not making one for American Thanksgiving, uh, what are we doing? Please make me pie. Anyway, uh, whenever you're, if you're making it from scratch, fantastic. This will work great for you on the, uh, on the, what you call it on, on the crust, whenever you put the crust down before you put the pie filling in, you can always draw a little sigil. Only you know it's there. And it can be for um, for uh, prosperity. It can be for love, for connectedness. Again, think of the, think of the vines of uh, the pumpkin patch and how the vines will go around things and, you know, and connect one thing to another and how things are all connected because of these vines. And create your own little vine work with a sigil that you put on the pie crust, like, you know, on the inside of the pie crust, and then put your filling and all that in there, and nobody will be the wiser. So a great way to do some kitchen witchery with making a pie. So until next time, uh, let me just say, have a gourd old day. Uh, I, I, I have been trying to find so many ways to put a gourd pun in here. But I, I couldn't find that many ways. Anyway, until next time, may you have love, hugs, and ladybugs. Bye, pumpkins. <laughs>